Hi. Today, Margaret and I will be making country wines. Now, Margaret, you know that I don't know anything about making wines, so you're going to have to tell me now. What, what are country wines? Well, Jackson, country wines are wines made from anything other than the grapes. Really? Oh, uh, right. fruit and vegetables and things like that? Yes, you can make nice wines from all fruits and berries. Often. Is there anything you can't make wines from? Yeah, uh, yes, there is. What? There are two things. Uh -huh. Green beans and eggs. Great, because I, I really wouldn't be wild about no. green bean wine. Are these, are these some of the things that we can, uh, we can make the wines from? Vegetables, Pine some flowers, and honey. Yes. Pineapple? Uh, pineapples make the very nice country wine. It could hurt you when you're trying to squeeze them with your feet or stand on them. <laughs> very, right, very painful. Indeed. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, Parsnip. Parsnip? Oh, hope it doesn't smell like that. No, it won't smell like that. Actually, a parsnip makes a very nice wine. Recently, I tasted a quite a nice sherry. Maybe mm. I'm part and strange as it may seem. It was really quite nice. A little, Par little earthy. Parsnips, parsnip sherry? Yes. Oof. That's what it was now, how about... Uh, yes, parsley. Mm-hmm. Good? Yes, it's very nice. Mixed with a little lemon juice, a little orange juice. Mm. And some grapefruit juice. Great idea. Very nice. Here we have some figs. Very nice wine. Oranges. Some apricots. What about apples? Almost all varieties of apple make nice wine, except for yellow transparent. Okay, now today we are going to use what fruit? We're going to use blackberries today. Oh, great. So I can just go out into the country and uh, and pick some blackberries by the side of the road in my little plastic pail, huh? Right. You can go out in the country and pick them. But it's unwise to pick any wild fruits off the side of the road. Why is that? Because of the exhaust from the motor vehicles. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Really. The taste will come through on the finished wine as a metallic taste. So where should should you get your fruit then? Oh, you can go to farmer's pasture, any fields, but try to pick them away from the roadside. That's a good idea. Right, yes. Okay, uh, what next? Let's look at the basic equipment we need. And I think I have it here, Margaret. Right. So, supplies we have, my goodness, what's oh, that? This is a siphon tube with the siphon rod. Mm-hmm. Very handy with it gadget on the end of this siphon hose. So it just clips it on the edge? Uh -huh. Get called away to the telephone or you have to shut the hot water tap off or something. You can stop your lawn running. Very good idea. Mm -hmm. so here's a nice little yes. outfit here. And this is a straining, a nylon straining cloth. And strain your fruit. Some things this I recognize, also, yes. This is also a strainer and here's something a funnel. I don't recognize. What is this? That's a hydrometer. Oh. And it is the most important piece of equipment in the wine cellar, actually. Oh, great. Mm. There you go, and here's something that looks it's important, too. <laughs> this is a plastic sheet, and most important piece of plastic sheeting. And here's sheeting. some vitamins here? No. No, no that, vitamins. That is an acid testing kit. Mm. Oh, that looks yes. uh, dainty. Yes, that's an elastic band to hold your plastic sheet and down the nice and tight. longest plastic spoon. Right. Plastic uh, spoon, such that, a necessary. That'd be good for taking bad medicine if right. it was a long way yes. away from your mouth. Here we go. And I recognize that. Yes, that's a tiny plastic strainer. Uh, a little thermometer here, huh? Yes. Taking the temperature. Here's something that looks uh, pretty important, too. Yes, indeed it's important, Jackson. That's called a bottle washer. Hooks onto your tap, bottle on here, clean in a jiffy. Let's see that. Now you can just, the tap goes there, doesn't it? Yep. Just hook this, uh, screw this onto your tap. Uh -huh. You require the garden hose fitting on your tap to use this, though. Uh -huh. You put the bottle on here, trigger this little lever. S sounds like a great way to Excellent. have a great way to have a drink too. Okay. Here is the most Very handy here is the most important thing: the magic wand to make all this work. Poof, there you yes, go. Yes, really. No, Jackson, that is a bottle filler. Oh, and we've got something here. Kind of, uh, help. Uh, what? What? Uh, what is that this? That is a secondary fermenter, commonly called a carboy. A carboy. Carboy. Now, wait a second. Now. I've, I've never made wine before. Right. Now, how much will this, is this a starter kit? How much will it cost me? This 
for this basic equipment, it should cost you approximately $45. Gee, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Well, I'm sure that I've never spent $45 on a bottle of wine before. People that's I've eaten right. with have, but never me. But that, that seems quite reasonable. I'd like to stress, though, uh -huh. uh, not to go out and buy a lot of elaborate equipment in the beginning. Once you get to know your hobby and mm -hmm. enjoy it, buy one good piece of equipment a year. Perhaps another carboy mm -hmm. or another primary mm -hmm. fermenter. And in time, you will have all you require. Now, do these come in different sizes? Yes, both come in different sizes. Mm -hmm. Carboys come anywhere from two and a half gallons to ten gallons, mm -hmm. as does the primary fermenters come in two and a half gallons up to 45 gallon capacity. Yeah, because I knew this was getting yeah. pretty big to have to drink of because you could <laughs> spill all over your need about three or four of these things. That's right. So, uh, when do we start? Let's start right away. Good idea. Right. Here, Jackson, mm -hmm. is our berries that we are going to make our wine from today. These berries have been frozen and are now thawed, all ready for wine. Now, no, no, wait a minute. Uh, is, it, is it better to use frozen berries than fresh? It is a wise idea to freeze berries for wine. Why is that? When, during the thawing, freezing and thawing process, the fibers break down, releasing much more juice, better quality juice, than you could get by pounding their fresh counterpart. Look, you see the juice? Uh -huh. You see the juice we have from these frozen berries? Ooh, I could drink that. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's just wonderful. So it's always best when you're making berry wine to freeze them. Apart from freezing the fruit, what condition does it have to be in? Your fruit should always be in A1 condition, picked at the peak of perfection. Any damaged spots, any bruises, any cracks in fruit, don't use it. If the fruit is not clean enough to eat out of hand, make jam, freeze, or preserve in any way, then it's not clean enough for the wine barrel. No, no, wait a minute. Now, do you use, always use oh, plastic pails instead of, uh, let's say, a nice shiny metal container? Oh, indeed. Never ever in your winemaking activities use metal articles, Why such no. as spoons, saucepans, fermentation vessels, especially if they are uh, aluminum, cast iron, even these enamel kettles with the slightest chip in them are very dangerous. Well, well, why? Because all wines are slightly acidic. And the acidity, when the acidity of the wines comes into a contact with a metal object, horrible things can happen. You have chamber of horrors right there, taking on metal, uh, bits and pieces of metal. Oh. Just, they just are not compatible. These so, are gone. Right off the bat, and I see a metal potato masher there. Gone. Right. I have to use my fist. Yes. <laughs> Fairly safe with Some, that. Something plastic. Okay. Never, in, uh, if you're going to make wine right off the bat, start with that promise. You never use anything metal. Okay, what are we going to do now? Now we can make our wine. Good idea. First, we must sterilize our equipment. Okay, I'll get the frozen berries out of here. Now, Jackson, equally as important as using fresh clean, ripe fruit. Mm -hmm. It is just as important we use clean, sterilized equipment mm -hmm. at all times because any lacks in cleanliness will sooner or later lead to a spoilage. Oh, great. So this is a sulfite solution mm -hmm. that we use to disinfect all our equipment. Before we use anything, it must be washed, mm -hmm. clean, and rinsed with this sulfite solution. Make sure all the edges are smell that. Oh, oof. that Isn't would that, disinfect me, all right. Pungent, <laughs> pungent odor. Now this solution, this sulfite solution, is reusable. Oh, great. Reusable and will be, can be reusable up to three months. Right. With a good potency. Rinse it well. Not necessary to rinse with water again. Uh -huh. This is just fine to, to leave it. Okay. Well, 
stuff is yes, strong. Yes, <laughs> it has, a, has a, a disinfectant for the equipment. Now we add our berries. Oh, great. And don't they look lovely? They look wonderful. They make a very nice batch. Well, we have enough berries here today to make approximately one gallon. Okay. I think that will be quite nice one. Oh, that's great. Now, unless you oh. want me to take off my socks and shoes, yeah. you'll probably want to use they, this instead, yes, right? Yes, okay. they should be crushed. They're, they're just not quite broken down enough. Okay. So that's all. That's all we do. See how nicely those berries are all broken up? Oh, I see. see. This is what happens when you freeze fruit and uh, to make your wine from. The fibers break down and, and it, it, it just beats crushing them and, and beating them uh, say, when they're fresh. It say, says wear and tear yes. on your feet oh, and everything. Indeed. Are you allowed yes. to sing during this? Yes, you oh, can good. sing. Good, yes, good. indeed, you can sing. Yeah, that looks quite good. Here, let let me give you a hand here. All right, Jack. Here, I'll yes, put indeed. this down yeah. Ooh, country oh, wine those. passed by my window. Oh, you know, I think, Jackson, that looks very really good. I think I've mashed them beyond recognition. What's <laughs> That's next? That's right, they are. Now, the next thing we must do, we sterilized our equipment. We must now sterilize the fruit. Oh, okay. We, we do this to kill the wild yeast. The wild yeast. The wild I've heard yeast. them yelling in there. They are <laughs> terrible, aren't they? <laughs> to kill the wild yeast. Okay. And we're going to use Camden tablets. Now, Camden tablets contain uh -huh. seven grams of potassium metabasulfite. Uh -huh. Now, we can also use this uh, solution, uh -huh. sulfite. A little safer to use the Camden yeah. tablets. You've got correct measure here. But we just can't throw the Camden tablet in it. We must crush it. Uh -huh. So, I find, I find it uh, successful to crush a Camden tablet between the bowl. So of two spoons. Are you? Now I'm, I'm a little stuck. I don't have another spoon, so I'm just going to use the end of this. Oh, you, you've spoon. done this before, haven't you? Yes, How I long have, have you been making I have, wine? I have done this. There. Oh, there you oh, go. Mercy. Hey, hey, let me, let me try it here. Yeah. Yeah, see, I watch you. See, I can pick oh. these things up. Watch this. Here we go. There we go. There. Sounds great. Now, what do we okay, do? Just, just sprinkle this in just here? Just sprinkle the, okay. the Camden tablet. Oh, okay, there. Great. Now, stir that in well. Um, you, can I stir? Can I stir? You could possibly get the same fumes that you would get from this, but not as strong. Some people would use two Camden tablets in to make one gallon of wine. But that, I have always felt, is a little too much. Yeah. One will do uh, just fine. Good, great. So, so there, now, there our fruit has been sterilized mm -hmm. with the Camden tablets. Okay, what next? The next thing we add is the sugar. Oh, now, I have some sugar here. Mm -hmm. White sugar, now, I just... Oh, Jackson, no. I just about made a mistake, didn't I? Yeah, okay. <laughs> never, try never to add raw sugar to a ferment. Uh -huh. You run the risk of a stuck ferment by using raw sugar, because raw sugar doesn't dissolve and uh -huh. ferment in alcohol. Always... Dissolve your sugar. So uh -huh. I have prepared some liquid sugar. Okay. Now, with these, this much berries, between four and five pounds, uh -huh. rule of thumb is between four and five pounds, you use one gallon of water and three pounds of sugar. Oh, okay. So I have dissolved three pounds of sugar. Now, you need a, now a lot of, a lot of um, recipes, a lot of winemakers advocate three pounds of fruit per gallon. But I like to be a little bit more extravagant when I use the fruit. I like my wines a little heavier. Well, go crazy then, huh? And sure. you'll, you'll find it. So yeah, what, this, how much? This, no, you can use all of this. Really? Yes, this is three pounds of sugar. And I just pour it in, yeah, huh? Yeah, right. Okay. You just, you just pour it right in. I'll stir it in for you. You'll be in charge of stirring for a yeah. while here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So there. there we have, we've added our sugar. Mm-hmm. Three pounds of sugar. Any particular sugar yes. to you? Yes. Um, both sugars are fine. Uh -huh. uh, this is cane sugar. Corn sugar is very good as well. Um, I personally prefer corn sugar, corn sugar because huh? the action of the yeast is much faster, uh -huh. much quicker than uh, using cane sugar. But this is fine for blackberries. Now, Jackson, we are making a gallon of wine. Now, there wasn't quite a gallon in there. Uh -huh. You remember there was about yeah. a third. Uh -huh. So perhaps if you could put a third, a a two, thir thir two thirds of Two this. thirds? You're gonna this trust will, me with this two will, thirds. Now, this will bring us up to just slightly over a gallon, uh, which 
is a good idea. Uh-huh. Because we do need a little bit of wine for top-up later on. You can sing during this, too. That's, that's right. You can sing during this. So there. Oh, oh, boy, I need just, a little more. Just a little bit more. That should just about do it. Okay. Yeah, there. Now, there's your sugar and your water. There you have the basis for your must. Now we are going to use the additives needed. Okay. Okay. Would you pour me a little bit of water, please, I Jackson? would love to pour you a little bit of water. How much? No, that's just plenty. Okay. It's lovely, thank you. Now, this is tannin, mm -hmm. grape tannin. We really don't need grape tannin. There is plenty of natural tannin in blackberries. Okay. No, we, will, we will not use tannin in this wine. This is acid, blend. This is yeast nutrient. And this is pectic enzyme. And we need approximately half a teaspoonful of yeah. each. Teaspoon. Half a teaspoon there of each go. per gallon. Now we're making one gallon, so we'll use only half a teaspoon. If we were making 10 gallons, we would need five teaspoons. But since this is one gallon, we'll use one half teaspoon of acid. Mm-hmm. Blend. I'll get that out of your way now. Okay. Oops. One half teaspoon of yeast nutrient. All right. And one half teaspoon pectic enzyme. Great. Now, I like to put all my additives in a small cup such as this and make a slurry from it and add it that to the must rather than sprinkling each additive on the must. You see, it doesn't dissolve very well. It rather coagulates and by mixing a slurry from it it's well mixed before you add it to your must. You know I used to do the same thing with cocoa when I was a kid. Right, yes. Now we are going to add this mixture to our wine and mix it in well just like this. What, uh, what are the additives for? Um, the acid mm -hmm. is for an acid balance. Fruit can be too acidic or under acid, and the acid balances it. Uh, too little acid renders the wine insipid. Mm. Too much renders it tart, as tart like a lemon. You can usually count on one teaspoon per gallon. It's a pretty good rule of thumb for a good balance on country wines. This is pectic enzyme. Uh -huh. Pectic, uh, all fruits contain pectin. We require them for jams and jellies to make them set, but we don't want them in winemaking. They will leave a pectin haze, off flavors, very difficult to clear. So we use pectic enzymes to break the pectin down. Also acts as a bit of a clearing agent, also releases more juice from the fruit. Now this is interesting, uh, nutrients. I mean, yes. there's not enough in the, in the, uh, in the fruit? Uh, very often there isn't enough natural nutrient, especially in fruit wines, country wines. So we use yeast nutrient, which is actually just a vitamin for the yeast. Oh, great. How are we coming? Yeah, it just, it's just lovely. It's just mixed, all mixed in very, very nicely. Now actually, um, Jackson, I think we should take a hydrometer reading. You're going to do that to me, or you're going to do that to that? <laughs> we are going to um, see how much sugar this contains. Now, I remember purpose. what it looked like. Hydrometer, hydrometer. Ooh, I know what it are. looks like. I yeah, just don't know what it does. <laughs> very valuable little piece of equipment, Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a hydrometer measures the density of liquids, mm -hmm. sugar, water, and alcohol. Now, wine is a product of conversion of sugar to alcohol, thus specific gravity. And if we know how much sugar and what the specific gravity is in our must, we can then determine the alcohol content. Well, uh, will this tell you how strong it's going to be? Yes. Mm -hmm. what, what would be the ideal strength, the alcohol? Oh, 10, 11, 12 percent alcohol mm -hmm. is very nice for country wines. That's good. You want it much strong. No, no, you'd want to have one or two glasses That's anyway. That's right. Yes. You know, I don't know how you're going to do this. It's going to have a hard time staying under your tongue. <laughs> Let me show you. Okay. Now, 
you would almost think you would just pour this mm -hmm. solution in to the hydrometer flask, but you can't get a true end reading if you have solids. Ah, uh, yes, of course. That's the what it measures. Yeah. So what I do, I have a little strainer, mm -hmm. and I have a water glass, and I strain off the solids like so. Mm. Well, I get about a flask full. Now, there, you see, I've strained the fruit. Mm -hmm. Put it back in. Now you have a nice, clear, clean liquid, and you can get a good hydrometer reading with no solids in the wine. You see? Oh, yeah. Oh, there. Oh. There. Now, do you see how it registers the sugar? No. Oh, there. What is that? Now, the reading, reading on that uh -huh. is, what, 1090. And then, is that good? Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Oh, good. That yeah. is excellent. That's approximately what three pounds per gallon will give you. Um, 1090 will also give you approximately 12% alcohol. And that's what As it ferments mm -hmm. out. Yes. Now, if you had too much alcohol, how would you... If you had too much sugar? Yeah. If you had too much sugar, Jackson, the reading would be higher. 1100, 1110, uh -huh. 1120. That is much too much because that renders, uh, ferments out to 14, 16, Oof. 18% alcohol. Or a bad weekend. Oof. That's right. You wouldn't want to serve your yeah. guests with it. No, how would you bring that down, though? With the addition of water only, oh, unfortunately. Of course, uh -huh. you see. So the, the secret is not to add too much sugar initially. Just And if you require more, if your reading is lower, under... 1080, 1060, say, you require more sugar. That's safer to do it that way uh -huh. because then you can add it. Rule of thumb is one half cup of sugar raises one gallon 10 degrees on the hydrometer. If it's registering 60 and you want it to register 80, that means you require one more cup of sugar per gallon. Okay. Dissolved sugar with some of the juice from your must. This is called a must. Why, uh, why is it called must? That is the terminology for this particular. So you thing. must have good must. That's right, it's you must. must have good yes. must. Jackson, before we dump this back into our must, I'd like to say the, uh, tell you about the importance of keeping a log mm -hmm. on all your winemaking. How many pounds of fruit you use? How many pounds of sugar? What your initial readings are? And two or three days from now, take another reading, exactly the way we have done here. Log it, either in a little notebook or on a strip of paper on your container. Mm. And you will know exactly where you're at. Makes okay. sense. Yeah, next year, this wine might turn out very good. It may not turn out good at all. But next year, you're going to say, hmm, blackberries. I made some last year. How did it turn out? I can't quite remember. But if you have a log, you can put on the bottom of all your figure, facts and figures that you have accumulated during the process of making this wine. It might say, really good, terrible mm -hmm. stuff, or whatever. You can be your own and critic. You, yeah. And you will know, well, well, how many pounds of sugar did I use, and so on. So it's very important you keep a good log. So if you would just log this, that our initial reading was 1090. 1090. Right on. Okay. Here we are. We'll just put that back in there. Put with the hydrometer for now. Now the next thing is to take a temperature. Because if we, of this must, if we have used real hot water to dissolve the sugar, or to thaw the berries, or for whatever reason you wish to do, could be too hot to, and when you introduce the yeast, it could immediately kill the yeast. So we have a little thermometer, just a little one, mm -hmm. which registers, how high does that register? It to? registers up to 40 or 110. Oh, sure. plenty. plenty. Okay, temperature, ideal temperature for a must for the introduction of yeast is 20 centigrade. Or about 70 Fahrenheit. About 70 mm -hmm. Fahrenheit, yes. And you just so kind if you of, uh, would just put that in there mm -hmm. and just see what the temperature is. Should I wait too long? Or no, no, it should come up immediately. Oh. You know, uh, my, the way I take temperature 
really, and it's almost a foolproof method, is with my little finger. Okay, let's see. I just stick it in, and if it just feels room temperature slightly cooler than my finger. What do you think that would be? What does your finger say? I would think that would be, oh, approximately 65 to 68 degrees. Right on. That seem how accurate my little finger We don't even need this. Just yeah. stick with your finger. So, now, that, that is ideal temperature mm -hmm. to introduce our yeast. This is a good quality wine yeast. You can't just use any old yeast. Uh... Definitely not. Never, ever use a baker's yeast mm -hmm. or a brewer's yeast. Now we've taken our temperature. Mm -hmm. No more stirring is necessary. And I'm just going to sprinkle in this good quality wine yeast. Just sprinkle it gently over the top of the must, like so. You don't stir, huh? No, Jackson, you never stir. When you use a dry yeast like this, you never stir it in. Because you would, if you did that, you would drown the yeast. That would be terrible. Yes, indeed it would. And yeast needs oxygen to evolve. So we just leave it rest on top of the must, just like that. Our next step, Jackson, is to cover this primary fermenter with this small piece of plastic. Purpose to keep the dust and the air out and keep those little fruit flies at bay. Fruit flies are a winemaker's enemy and must keep him out of all our winemaking activities. Now what do we do there. with him? Now, this has to go through the fermentation process and the best temperature is to keep this at room temperature. So that would affect don't where want, you store it. Yes. That uh -huh. is true. You don't want it too cold. It takes too long for the yeast to perk up and work. You want it too hot, it will kill the yeast. Mm -hmm. So room temperature, ideal. So how long, to store this. How long will this, uh, this take now? After the onset of fermentation, you can remove the fruit after four, six, or eight hours. Four, six, or eight hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. should we just sit and kind of the watch it? The heavier body, the darker you, the wine you want, the longer you leave it. Um, too long a fruit pulp fermentation uh, is very dangerous because of all the insignificant little seeds in that fruit. The onslaught of the fermentation strips the coating from those seeds, rendering a bitterness onto the wine, which is absolutely impossible to remove oh. if the fermentation has been left to go on too long. I ferment anywhere from four to eight hours on all my berry wines, which is a good rule of thumb. Many people, many winemakers, uh, ferment six, seven, eight days, which you can obviously see is much too long. Oh, no, I like much, the idea of four hours long. much better. Yes, yeah. much too long. Yeah. Hello, Hello, Mark. Hello, Jackson. How is this doing? Well, it looks pretty good. Oh, it does indeed. It looks very good. What is it for? Six, eight hours? Six, eight? Added? Boy, it just seems like minutes, huh? Yes, Time goes really faster and you're having fun. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's been fermenting long enough mm -hmm. on the pulp. I think it would be wise to remove it from the pulp now. Right. Oh, and I'm in charge of straining. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Now, what should I do? This is another primary that we're going to strain through a nylon screen. Okay. Okay. Now, if I could get you to lift this up. Oh, I'd love and to. Pour that in. Just to remove, right in, right in here. Just to remove the pulp. This, this is going to take the pulp. Okay, here we go. Let's hold this for you. Thank you. There we are. You can tell us. This. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry, nice? did I get a little on you? No, that's fine. Uh, see how nicely that's straining me. It's doing a great job. Off of the Right. Yeah. So, we just let that drip for a few minutes mm -hmm. to get most of that liquid out. A few minutes? Yeah, just, just a few minutes. Okay. 
Yeah. He doesn't take long for it to cook. Up. Now, what should I do after that? Should I just wrap you this just, up and take just this up? Wrap home? this up and take it away. Now, let's see. Feed it to the chickens or put it on the compost pile. Just whichever. That's if you have chickens. Mm-hmm. Well, if you okay. don't have chickens, I guess we have to put it on the compost pile. There. How's okay. that? You don't want to squeeze it. You don't want to. No, you don't okay. want to squeeze it. Okay. Just, just let it drip. There. Okay. Now you have removed the fruit mm -hmm. from your wine. There will, you will be running no risk of bitterness from those little seeds or uh, strong flavors from the fruit. Okay. Now, now should I put this back? Uh, yes. This I is think a pretty big This, pill. this fermenter is just a little bit too large. Okay. So we'll just pour it right back into here. Can you manage that? Yeah. I didn't know I was gonna have to work oh, so hard. There you go. Oh, see that yeast is working very nicely in there now. No, very nice color. Very nice. Now we're rid of our fruit, you see. It's only been fermenting for a matter of hours. Specific gravity has obviously not dropped too far. So we will leave this in this primary fermenter oh eight, nine, ten days until the specific gravity has dropped below a thousand. Okay. Okay. We'll just recover it. Okay. Put down. There. Isn't that look nice? Okay, and so I guess... All the fruit's drained off. And now we should just put this in warm corner in the kitchen or room temperature. Keep it at room temperature, nice and warm, so that yeast can continue to ferment. So we'll see you in what? Uh, oh, eight or ten eight eight, days? Eight, nine, ten days. Okay. Good. Bye-bye. Yep, Great. Bye-bye, Jackson. So what do you think, huh? I think it looks pretty good, Jackson. It looks it great. Does look good, it looks doesn't it? Fabulous. Looks almost ready to be racked into the secondary. Well, why not? It's uh, hey, it's been ten days. Yes. Let's do indeed. it. Right. Now the specific gravity of that should be down to a thousand, just under a thousand. Sounds good to me. Oh yes, and I think that we should start. Oh, what uh, what are you getting this? here? Uh, this we're going to use for a secondary mm -hmm. fermenter. We are only making one gallon of wine, so that is just going to accommodate this so much. This. Okay. Now, remove the air valve. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> it is ready. Plastic sheet. Oh, now and, this. And you need this, this too, don't you? Oh, hang on a right. second. Right. Indeed. Now, do you want me to lift the, this? The elevation want... has to be... Yes, I remember that. Lower than the... Uh, the receiving vessel must uh -huh. be lower than this. Uh, we have already rinsed this under the tap mm -hmm. and dipped this into the sulfite solution, mm -hmm. so it's already sterilized. Now, what do you want now, me to do with this? I, I, I'm going to put this down in here, uh -huh. and you are going to suck the end of that. So it's a, it's a siphon. So hey, I, 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 right. I remember this that is from called, being a kid. This is called racking. Okay. And we rack to remove the wine from the lees. And the lees is the sediment. Okay. okay. Take a breath, okay. huh? Would be a good idea. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> There you are, Remy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> oh dear me, what have you done? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you can lift your vessel up. Oh, mm -hmm. there. There. Mm -hmm. there you are. Huh? See? Mm -hmm. Very. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> get rid of that. <laughs> ah, that wasn't bad. No, that tastes very nice, doesn't it? There we are. Now we should. We will siphon, rack all of this from this primary fermenter onto our secondary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, good, Jackson. You finished. Yep. Mm. Undo this. There good, go. good too. You have a little bit left over. Excellent for topping up after racking. Excellent. Get that out of the way. Now, 
we're going to use, and this is an airlock. Mm -hmm. We put this on the top, and I have already put, half filled it with a sulfite solution. Mm -hmm. And what, uh, what does the airlock do? The airlocks is to uh, keep dust and air out, and it permits the escape of gases. Well, here we are three months later. Yes, it's three months since we started this wine. Uh, it has been racked approximately four times, four times. Mm -hmm. at ten day intervals, removing all the lees, sediment, which formed during the fermentation process. It is now ready for fining. Mm -hmm. First, we are going to take a hydrometer reading on this wine. Now we took a reading the last time we racked, about 10 days, two weeks ago, and the reading was as same as it is today, which indicates the wine has is completed. Mm -hmm. It has finished fermenting. Now how, how strong is it now, alcohol? Now the alcohol reading on this wine would be approximately 12%. Mm -hmm. You see, our, we, our initial reading was 1090, okay? Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. where it, this side shows you the alcohol content, mm -hmm. you see? At ten, if we started at 1070 and it fermented out, you would get 10%. You started it at 1080 mm -hmm. and fermented out, you'd get 11. We started it at 1090, hoping for 12% alcohol. But since it didn't ferment quite down to 990, you will possibly have approximately 10 and a half, 11% alcohol. And that would be a drier wine? No, no. It no? will be slightly sweeter, which is nice for country wine. Country wines are usually much nicer, served with a little bit of residual sugar. Mark? Now, yeah, our next step is the fining process. There are several fining agents available today, such as Isinglass, Bentonite, Gelatin Finings, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. All very good finings. We have fined this, and it has come out reasonably clear. But there is another form of clearing and that is a filter system. I see. Mm -hmm. Why actually do we find this one? Um, country wines all require findings. There are small particles, fruit particles mm -hmm. uh, throughout. Just doesn't, they seem to remain in suspension, necessitating the finding, and in many cases, the filtering. Oh, let's get to that next step now. Right. Margaret, what is this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> this is a filter system. Ah. Now, findings that we talked about just a moment ago certainly do a good job mm -hmm. in clearing a stable wine. Mm -hmm. But the filter system makes your wines star bright. How, how, uh, how does it work? It's not too elaborate, mm -hmm. really. Wines are mm -hmm. placed in the tank through pressure, mm -hmm. come through these plates. Now, these plates contain two filters, one on the bottom and mm -hmm. one on the top. I see. Sandwiched together like a clubhouse sandwich almost. You can use coarse or fine filters, but since we've made red wine, we are using a coarse filter. I see. Because red wines are a little heavier than white. Now, they come through, through the filter plate, through the filter pads, out through here, and you can uh, filter and bottle at the same time. But I like to filter directly into gallon jugs mm -hmm. and bottle at a later date. Or directly into your mouth. <laughs> oh, right, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a very interesting little tray which comes with this filter mm -hmm. because you inevitably have a few drops. It, you know, as you progress and the filter pad, takes out more of the solids which is in the wine 
it becomes a little bit plugged. So mm -hmm. it, it will inevitably leak. Oh, I see. This so tray this is a very good idea. Necessary to have one exactly like that, but that is an ideal little tray to catch the drips. Uh, these do not require too much maintenance. Are they expensive? Uh, yes. Uh, well, it, depending what you call expensive, they retail anywhere from seventy-five to eighty-five dollars. That's two figures. That's mm -hmm. expensive for me. Yeah. Now the uh, the filter pads mm -hmm. are a dollar ninety-five a pair, and a pair of pads will do approximately four gallons oh, very nicely. If the wine is not too dirty, too many solids, you can get five gallons through quite nicely. Okay, shall we uh, do a little filtering? Very good idea. Let's try and put so some of this I through. I pour this into yes. here. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll take this off. Oh, mm -hmm. there we go. That's fine. And I'll remove this. The airlock, yes. And I think I will use yes. this. Yes, Okay, mm -hmm. now. Do you want to hold now, that? You or? might wonder why we had an airlock on a finished stable wine. But using an airlock always, even on a finished wine, is just cheap insurance. The temperature rises and gets a little bit warmer, and if there happens to be one or two yeast cells in that gallon jug, it will start the whole process of fermentation over again. This, I get this. And there you are. Look, see, it's coming. Oh, there, there we, we are. Go. Nice and easy. There. Now we'll, we'll release that clamp there. And this clamp is released. Oh, it's the carbon dioxide in the filter, which is there we go. We'll which get rid of is that. creating these furious little bubbles here. That uh, doesn't look too strong there, does it? No, no. The reason for that, Jackson, is if we, uh, prior to putting the wine in, mm -hmm. we run, ran a tank full of wa clear water through the filter system to clean the filter pads just to eliminate any taste or flavor which might come from filter See, pad. You can give that so, to someone you don't like then. Our, bottle, first, sure. our first approximately eight ounces which comes through the filter should not be used because it contains the water which okay. uh, came from the filter pad. So now we have Put them out through there. Should so I? now you can start pumping. Oh, boy. There, is a bit of, there is a bit of carbon dioxide in that filter. Mm -hmm. That is the reason for the carbon dioxide. Stop, Jackson. Okay, that's enough pressure. Okay. That's just about enough pressure. So I'm going to fill another bottle. Here. Okay, here I can. Mm -hmm. There. Cool. Oops, I'm sorry. Well, I, you told I spilled, me it was a little messy. I spilled a drop or two. See how nice and clear that's coming? Mm -hmm. Now the carbon dioxide bubbles are all gone now. The filter pad is, is clear and clean. The wine is coming out. Okay, I guess you'll need thing. another bottle soon. Yes, very soon, but we'll, we'll just... And there are little clamps mm -hmm. on this uh, siphon hose mm -hmm. to, for this reason. You see, we want to stop uh -huh. it now. You You're see? You're very good at that. You see? Uh -huh. <laughs> there. Uh -huh. Here we are. Now, should you not have another vessel to receive the wine from the filter, you can just clamp it off at any time. Mm -hmm. Do you see how nice and clear this is now? Oh. After going through the filter? Nice. Star bright. Now that we have filtered our wine, mm -hmm. nice and clear, it is now ready for bottling. But before we get onto that, now is the time to decide whether you would like to leave it as dry as it is, whether you would like to sweeten it up, or perhaps you'd like to blend it. Is that done just by taste? Oh yes, uh -huh. just by taste. You uh -huh. know what your hydrometer reading was? It was 94, 95. If you wish to leave it that way, fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Now it's ready to bottle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are these different? I, obviously these are different uh, oh, shapes and there sizes. Are, there are many sizes and shapes and types of wine bottles available today. These are the type of wine bottles which all receive corks. 
Excuse me, uh, why the different colors? Wine bottles come in various colors, as you can see. This one is lighter than this one, than this one, and this one. They all signify a different type of wine, but also the color um, prevents the entrance of light. Light is ruinous to wines, and so this is why most wine bottles are colored. And that's why you see all those people drinking out of paper bags. So if you have to use wine bottles, um, uh, get wine bottles, or mm -hmm. purchase them, or where would you, whatever. Where would you just buy them from the, from the wine store? You can do that. Most wine and beer supply shops do mm -hmm. sell new mm -hmm. bottles. But you know a good idea is to ask your friends to save their bottles. Oh, they, they'll probably want them returned, though, full. Oh, well. <laughs> I guess that's the whole yeah, idea. But right? just ask them, and also restaurants. These are nice as well. Yes, that's a very nice bottle, uh, wine bottle. This one receives the screw caps. Mm -hmm. This plastic very nicely. Now, when we use a screw cap, I would recommend that you use this cap because of it being plastic throughout, plastic liner, plastic uh -huh. back, you can wash and sterilize and reuse that bottle mm -hmm. with safety. I mean bottle cap with safety. This one is plastic, good cap, but it has this paper liner. And when you reuse that, you will obviously have trapped some moisture and bacteria behind this liner. And you, it could harbor off smells, and render them onto your wine. So if you are going to purchase screw caps for your wine bottles, I strongly recommend you buy that one. Now we have some other ones here. We have some yes. uh, a plastic. That, uh... That's a very good one too. Now that one doesn't fit all wine bottles mm -hmm. snugly, but it's a good closure because it's plastic throughout, can be washed and sterilized. And uh, what about these? Those are closures for gallon jugs. Mm -hmm. Good closures. But here again, this one's metal and this one's plastic. And they have the paper liners. They also have these plastic ones for the gallon jugs, which are plastic throughout. They can I be see. washed and sterilized and reused with safety. You know, I don't see any of those normal corks here. No. These all take the wine uh, bottle corks. And I have them soaking over here. These corks have been soaking for approximately four hours, which is the right length of time to soak a cork in order to soften it. And we use hot water, hot tap water, never boiling water. Why do you keep them damp? Keep them soft, mm -hmm. so as the corker can bring them down to size to fit the bottles. When you purchase your corks for your wine bottles, I would recommend that you choose corks with a nice, smooth, density mm -hmm. such as this one is. Do you notice the, the rough density of these two corks? Fine, good corks can be used, but if you have a choice, choose this. You might find that these ones would be cent or two more expensive as well, but it's worth it in the long run. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. okay. Now comes the time to cork our wine. Oh, sounds like fun. Oh, at last, eh? <laughs> now, there are three, four different types of corkers on the market. This is a hand corker. Very easy to operate. The cork is inserted in here. Handles are closed. Plunger is pushed down onto the cork. Oh, I see. Yeah. See? Plunger just pushed down onto the cork like that. Great. And into the bottle. <laughs> And this is the standard floor corker. Let's see, are uh, these expensive? No, not really. Uh, this one ranges in price, boom, fifteen to twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. This one anywhere from seventy-five to eighty, eighty-five dollars. I see. This one is very nice to use. Very easy. Very easy to handle. Easy? And then maybe I you, should be the one that does like it. Then. To okay. Try? Sure, love to. Right. It's a bottle of our blackberry oh, wine. Here. Uh, it and goes... Uh, just puts on that stand, push it down to the very spring. Okay. There. 
Oh, I see. Yeah. These are the corks that we've been soaking. Ah, the wet corks. Mm -hmm. um, is there an up or down? Or? No, no, oh, no, no. Oh, just, just, okay. just plunge them in. Okay. okay. And, and just bring this lever down, and plunge it right into the bottle. See how easy that is. Okay. There, there you are. are. Look at that. Hey, not bad. Not bad at be. all. Jackson, would you? I think we should try one of these oh, ones. Thought you'd never yeah. ask. Here, allow me, please. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Very nice. Hmm. Nice color. It smells good. So clear. Hmm. Let's see. Should I? Good. Tastes wonderful. Oh. Gee, Great. you did good work. Yeah. You, how long have you been making wines? Oh, I've been making wines almost 30 years now. Mm -hmm. And it's been a fantastic hobby. You know, winemaking is not new. No. It goes back in man's ancient history to soon after the development of agriculture. Probably right after the development right. of agriculture, right. yeah. Right. The methods and procedures used have obviously improved mm -hmm. and changed over the years with the availability of ingredients, equipment, books on the subject, plus the high cost of imported wines oh, yes. mm -hmm. have all helped to revive the art of home winemaking. To so become with, a, a... With a great Excitement. So it's become a very, a very popular hobby now. Yes, it has. Um, it is now one of the fastest growing hobbies in the world today. I can see why. Mm -hmm. yeah. The bulk of uh, home wine making <clears throat> is made from the grapes now, mm -hmm. but there should be a small corner in every winemaker's cellar for country wines. There certainly should. They mm -hmm. all have a purpose such as a nice, light, dry apple wine served with a baked ham, <laughs> or a rich, red blackberry or cherry with a chocolate cake. I'm getting hungry <laughs> just talking about it. That's not fair. Mmm, you know, this has just got to be good for you. Yeah, well, you know, wine is a healthy beverage. Basically, it's chemical-free, and it contains most of the vitamins and minerals the body requires, including potassium, Sodium, calcium, manganese, phosphorus, copper, iron, cobalt, sulfur, chromium, and zinc. And it also contains vitamins? Oh, of course. A, B, C, and B complex. And the acid in the wine is beneficial. It aids the digestive system. Plus, a glass or two at bedtime absolves the need of sleeping pill. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you saying the more I drink, the healthier I get? Yes, but like anything else, in moderation. Right. Do you know what? I think it's time we made a toast. You're right. Here's to home winemaking. making.